What is going on, ladies and gentlemen? Welcome back to another episode of East vs. West, the only channel, only channel, <laughs> give you your dose of both coasts. I'm your host, Anthony. I, and I'm Eddie. Sorry, I got caught up in that. Just... Only channel. And it's the only channel or only podcast with you and I. Okay. Yeah. So it's one of that, a kind. One of started, a kind. Started a couple years ago, man. They can't they can't take that away from us. No. No, these no guys can't can take that from us. I'm gonna <laughs> trademark and copyright this fucking name right now. Hell yeah. It's ours. And and, and the the dose of both coasts. We gotta, I'm putting, we gotta trademark I'm putting that. A fucking name on the co signing of this fucking trademark and copyright. <laughs> that way anyone tries to steal, we both get money from it. This is this is our brainstorm of an idea, man. Yeah, um, it was cool. We, we we venture into uh, today's topic, uh, which we did have one set topic, but then over the weekend a new speculation map came out, so we're going to talk a little bit about the changes to that as well. But before we get in, we just launched uh, yesterday some new East versus West merchandise. Um, a nice, beautiful T-shirt with a new logo done by my cousin Andrew, who's been on the channel many times, uh, host of the Personal Paradigm podcast on Spotify. Go listen now. Um, and a great graphic design artist, great music person. He's also uh, got some new music out on SoundCloud as well. Uh, Super Drew, S-O-O-P-E-R, Drew, um, D-E, or D-R-E-W. And... Um, yeah, he, he does a lot of our graphics for the channel. He does a lot of our logos, Shoot the Shit, Mindless Or Podcast. Um, and then he just did the East versus West logo, which came out really good. Um, and so we we launched T-shirts. There's T-shirts, hoodies, women's T-shirts, tank tops, um, long sleeve T-shirts, stickers. So go check that out right now. The link for the merch site is in the bio. Um, we have been wanting to launch a T-shirt for some time now. And, yep. Um, I know right now is is a difficult time for a lot of people financially, so um, that's why I'm kind of holding back on a lot of t-shirt ideas I have. But um, this one, I think we just had to get out there just because we wanted to. When everybody is either financially back on track or or you know just you know wants to buy it now uh, to get their kind of hopes up and they can rep their favorite and only <laughs> East and West Coast. Yeah. And, and and we we have a lot of of time on our hands right now, so yeah. it, it's a good opportunity for us to kind of work out the kinks on any ideas that we have. Um, in addition to that, I'd like to add the fact that you know on East versus West, we don't just talk Halloween Horror Nights. As of recent, that's what we talk about. Um, but if it's your first time tuning in to listen to us, um, make sure that you you come back, go back through through some of our old episodes as well. Uh, Halloween Horror Nights isn't the only thing that we focus on. It is the majority of what we focus on during certain ter- certain seasons, but we we look at other events that are on both both East and West, or compare similar events like Knots and Bush Gardens um, during the year. So something to to look forward to, and we'll keep on trying to change. We're always open to suggestions, so leave it down in the comments as well. I think a good way too to expand it as well is if you want to do a theme park edition of it to throw on your channel since your channel covers everything um and and it's a good way to expand the show as well um so if you guys are into that or if you guys want to see that uh let us know in the comments and we will do that um we still got to do our knots bush gardens one which will probably be actually next week so yep that would be a good another east versus west episode planned three weeks in a row let's do it that's a new that's a new record for us (laughs) Um, today we're going to talk about a new speculation map that was put out by HN Nightmares, who put out the first one. Um, a lot of people have been covering his maps lately because uh, it has been said that he tends to get a lot of speculations right. Um, no one knows how, no one knows why, but um, it's good for people who like speculation season and um, people who potentially want to see what's coming at the event this year to get a lot of people excited. So full-on warning before we continue, um, just like the last one, we don't condone the leaking, we don't condone the, uh, you know all spoilers and stuff. We're just passing down the news as to what we see on social media and what is sent to us um, via group chats and stuff like that. So we're just covering what these new maps say. There's not much really to cover, at least on the West Coast. There's more to cover on the East Coast this week, but... We just want to get the news out there as to uh, as possible speculations coming to the event. And, uh, yeah, just so so if any of these are, are potentially right, full-blown spoiler alert um, for the event. If you guys don't want to see any spoilers to this event, um, click off the video now. 
Uh, but if you guys are still in, let's go. <laughs> um, all right, Eddie, go ahead and start on the East Coast. What we have uh, new? Because I know I real I know they took out a couple of properties, and we we kind of we kind of speculated that last episode uh, because our good friend, um, uh, one of our good friends, one of our good YouTubers, one of our good YouTube friends actually uh, was telling us that two IPs were going to get uh, taken out because Warner Brothers, and we talked a little bit about that. Yeah. Um, so those two properties are Sabrina and uh, are the – what is it? The Magical Adventures the of Chilling Sabrina? Adventures of Sabrina. Chilling Adventures of Sabrina and Gremlins, um, which out of those two, I'm really sad to see Gremlins go. Uh, but Sabrina was a hit or miss for me. I wasn't really critiquing it too much. I haven't watched the show, so I wasn't giving too much feedback on or an opinion on it. I guess that's um, one less show we have to watch now, right? Right. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Um, but on top of that, one, one thing that we'll, we'll get into a little bit more is the fact that I believe Beetlejuice is also Warner Brothers, or I'm 99.9% sure that Beetlejuice is Warner Brothers as well. Beetlejuice uh, we is a, Warner Brothers, but I think they got a special contract with Universal. Yeah, because he's always at the Orlando parks, yeah. parks all the time, even out of haunt season. But um, uh, we had a few other changes. One of the big ones is the fact that on our speculation map now, uh, Billie Eilish no longer has her own house. Now it's Universal Monsters, The Bride, music by Billie Eilish. And then we have a new original called Pumpkins. Um, and last but not least, the legendary truth, Carrie Ohio, um, which I thought was really funny. A lot of people were doing videos and calling it Carrie O. <laughs> Carrie O. I know. I saw that too. <laughs> I'm like, I guess we're the only ones that actually got it right. Yeah. You actually know your stuff. I know. I was like, I was like, Carrie O. That's hilarious. But now it's just the legendary truth. So Carrie Ohio has been removed from the title. Um, and those are the things that have changed for the Orlando speculation map. Now that we have the version two. Yeah. Uh, how about on the West Coast? West Coast, uh, so they took out Gremlins and Sabrina, the Chilling Adventures of Sabrina, which we kind of already speculated that that was going to happen because usually with Warner Brothers, um, they are kind of stingy with their properties, uh, especially when they do events like Horror Made Here, which is supposed to is rumored to come back this year. So I can see maybe them incorporating stuff in that nature as far as Gremlins and Chilling Adventures of Sabrina at their event, if not as Maze's marketing purposes for merchandise and stuff. So, um, let, let me add something there. So I was pondering this, and um, I came to a conclusion as to why Warner Brothers does this. So in, in, some, chan uh, or in some cases, they actually do work with us, and they work mm -hmm. with Universal Studios, and it's, it's a success. But isn't it a smart idea that they start negotiations to the point where speculation maps start to leak from information that's been given? And then they pull it out because basically those universal speculation maps now create some expectations for us. And then it gets pulled and they're like, oh, well, we're going to have it at Horror Made here. So we're like, oh, damn, it's not going to be a Halloween Horror Nights. But I was really looking forward to it. I guess I'll have to go to Horror Made here. Yeah, it's it's a smart business proposition. However, yeah, because and it's funny that you bring that up because I think the one year they were going to do the Conjuring at Universal – the Conjuring mm -hmm. Universe, like they brought it to Horror Made here, which was a whole Conjuring Universe maze. Uh, yeah. Same thing with it. It's one speculation that I keep seeing year after year. And another thing, they when they were going to do it that one year because of the new movie, they brought it to Horror Made here. And exactly. um, I think like the only ones that have been kind of um, at both events was would be Freddy and Jason. Um because I think New Line o owns the rights to those characters. Yeah. But so the properties right there are up in the air. But um, and then, of course, the, you know, the Exorcist. Uh, but the, however, that's been at both events as well when they did the Exorcist in Hollywood. And I believe they did it in Orlando, right? Yeah, they did it in Orlando. Yeah. So they did the, the Exorcist in, in both coasts. And then the following year at um, – Horror made here. They did a forbidden kind of screen of The Exorcist, where they showed like the scariest parts inside of like a church uh, setting, and like there was actors around, like 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 priests and and nuns and and stuff to kind of give you that creepy vibe. And every now and yeah. then, Reagan would pop up. Sadly, there's really no footage of that on YouTube. I think because I, they didn't really want anyone filming in there, um, which I really wish they would have put something out on YouTube because it was such a good performance. I mean, like. You're sitting in pews, 
and you're watching some of the scariest parts of The Exorcist inside of a church, which is already a scary feeling as it is. You know, I mean, you have a demonic movie inside of a church, which is already unsettling as it is. And as the movie's progressing, like you see statues in the church, like eyes turn red, um, they start glowing. And then what was really funny is when I would look around at like nuns and like the, the priest and all that, like the nun, like the pew I was sitting at, like they would lean over to my cousin and kind of look down at them. And my cousin would look back and he'd get scared, That's which crazy. I thought was hilarious. So they, they really got into this whole vibe of that. And then every like when it really started progressing and stuff started getting out of control and chaotic in the uh, church, you, Reagan actually would pop out of like the the main stand or something or she would come out of like a corner or something like it would it'd be an actual actress dressed as reagan full makeup and everything no prosthetics or no masks no masks or anything it was all makeup which looked really cool um but long but, story short this is free marketing for them <laughs> yeah free marketing pretty much yeah <laughs> and um, and at, at, at the end of the day they may be the ones behind some of these speculation leaks i know right they may be the <laughs> uh, the leakers themselves so that that'd be funny but Basically, we got a secret IP and uh, original. So, um, you want to start on your end, and then we'll go to mine. Did you have a Jordan Peele original too? Yeah, we've on had the that early, in the first speculation. One. Okay. Yeah. All right. Cool. All right. Sure. Yeah, we'll start on on my end. Let me just open it back up. Um, I guess the the first thing that that I would go for is uh, let's touch on. Um, the fact that Billie Eilish no longer has a house, and I, I'm not sure if you know Universal Creative is actually listening, um, because there was a lot of backlash to her potentially getting her her own house at at uh, Halloween Horror Nights. You guys are still getting it, which yeah. I'm not sure how accurate that is or how accurate our map is, but now it's been changed to Universal Monsters: The Bride Music by Billie Eilish. Yeah. Uh, no longer a full maze for her now. If this ends up being the case, I think this is a little bit of them listening as well as still using the Billie Eilish name. Because I know the Billie Eilish name is going to bring fans to the event. Maybe yeah. not the fans that we want there, uh, but fans nonetheless, which, which means profit. Um, yeah. But if this ends up being the case, then I, I really think they're only using her for her name. And we may end up getting Universal Monsters to Bride with Billie Eilish just covering original universal monster mu uh, music so she won't even come up or maybe they'll say you know she came up with her own score for for the event but at the end of the day it's really just like covers of originals with yeah. her twist yeah um and, and with that being said the lagoon show is still there which is still an opportunity for them to further use her name because in this case this diminishes her presence at the event a lot. I think mm -hmm. Universal Monsters, The Bride, with music by Billie Eilish, completely diminishes her her presence. So it would be kind of a, a bad move for them to just use her in such a minuscule level. You know, the Lagoon Show would be a perfect opportunity to use her her status properly. Yeah. Uh, what do you think about that? I I don't. So when you when we were talking about this prior to going on the air. Uh... I don't know how I feel about Billie Eilish music in a Universal Monsters maze, only because so many years we've gotten Slash over here in Hollywood, and that continues to still be speculated for this year as well. I, I just feel like they're kind of giving you guys a, a kind of a bad setting for that. You know, I mean, it's always cool. No, regardless, the maze design and and everything probably will still be really cool. I mean, it's a Universal Monsters maze, so you can't go. You really can't mess that up. You know, I mean, you know, you, you tell this story of 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 a monster, and and you kind of reimagine it into a more of a darker horror story, which I think is really cool. But to add music by Billie Eilish, I don't know, man. I I think she is a fantastic person, and her personality looks like she'd be a really cool person to hang around with. I'm just, I'm not a fan of her music, um, and that's just because the music I listen to is like Iron Maiden, like heavy metal punk you know i listen to kind of like that kind of type music so like it, it would go if it would go the same way if you if you saw another famous pop star come to um horror nights and i just think it would like you know that's just how i would feel just because yeah. of my music taste um <laughs> but as universal, far as universal monsters the bride music by drake <laughs> oh god that'd be even worse that'd be even fucking worse man um but 
you know, I don't know how I would feel about this this Billie Eilish thing. I, I'm on the same boat with you. I think it would be nothing but covers of of famous like she would probably take some of the famous scores or something, really remix them and maybe add lyrics to them. Um, or it would just be covers of of monster songs they've made throughout the years of of different of the different monsters. Um, Figure is known for doing that as well. I mean, Figure is probably a staple at uh, Horror Nights Hollywood. Um, and he's known for releasing albums and stuff that are uh, kind of surrounding the monsters. I mean, if you go on Spotify right now, you can look up his his albums, and a lot of them are entitled like Frankenstein, The Mummy, you know. But they're all dubstep mixes of you know different like uh, quotes and stuff from the movie, as well as um, some of the songs that you hear. But I don't know. It. it I hope this just really. If it, if this is coming to the event this year, I hope that you know it blows me away. I really do. I hope yeah. that I'm wrong about everything I'm saying, and I hope that it blows fuck it blows me away because I just right now I'm just I you know I, like I said, Billie Eilish. She's probably a, a super sweet person, a super cool person. I mean, she's a huge Office fan, so that that really gives her points in my book because I love <laughs> the Office as well. Um, but I, I just I've I've never had an interest in her music, and that's not against her. She's probably a really talented artist. I mean, it sh- it surely proves it because she won five Grammys. But I mean, I I've just never been a fan of that kind of music, so I can't yeah. really say too much about it, other than the one song I know, which is "Bad Guy." Yeah. All right. Well, to kind of wrap that up, I, I think if they end up doing um or allowing her to do covers and some remixes and then giving her the lagoon show as well would be an extremely effective use of the name without Mm -hmm. her overpowering the event with her presence yeah Um, allowing still somebody else to get that uh a property or a house into halloween horror nights which is really what what my hesitation was with her getting a house the fact that she got a house meant somebody else or another IP was not going to get a house that potentially could have. In this case, we still kind of get her name. We still kind of get that same effect of um, we're able to use her for marketing purposes. Yeah. And we still get another house, which leads us to the house that looks like it replaced her, which is uh, Pumpkin, the original. Yeah. I mean, to go back to Billy Eilish one last time before we go on to the Pumpkin one, um, What's further been proving that she might be coming to the event too is like I think like in 2018 is when she first like really came out of the scene, um, or 2019 I don't remember. But Murdy tweeted like he liked her music and and it'd be interesting to uh, ever do something with that. And also not to mention I think last year she went to the event and that's how usually people meet. I mean that's how Slash met with Murdy. Um, going to the event, and then he the next year created his own original maze, which was clowns. Yeah. Um, so that's usually how it all starts. They go yep. to the event uh, if they find out they're fans of them, and then Murdy will probably talk with them, and they'll probably start discussing minor details or ideas that they have. And then as the event ends, and as it starts progressing into the new year and the new season, um, they'll start going more and more and talking about it. So that's just kind of further proof that she might come. Yeah, and appara- apparently she. She tried to like do scare acting as well, or she yeah. she wanted to, yeah. Uh, so, but yeah, pumpkins, pumpkins, pumpkins original. Um, no idea what this is, but I can only imagine. Um, it may be an extension of uh, pumpkin guts, which was, or I'm not sure if it was pumpkin guts, but there was a a scare zone that kind of in the same. Uh, kind of trajectory as like uh, trick or treat. Yeah, it was a scare zone, and now it, it, it's going to be a house. I was don't it, remember it. Was it in Cario? Yeah. <laughs> it, it actually was in Cario. Uh, <laughs> so, uh, for those of you, is, by the way, for those of you who are pronouncing it Cario, it's actually Cary, comma Ohio. O H is yeah. short for Ohio. So yeah, it's it, it's funny, but yeah, it's in Cario. <laughs> um, but yeah, I, I don't know too much about it as an original. Um, it could be something completely different, but I, I think the pumpkin guts or something of that nature was a scare zone. So this could be a derivative of that. Awesome. I, I think that would be interesting. I, I'm always a fan of original and 
I will say this: uh, Orlando never fails on originals, so yeah, they we can't knock it out of the park with originals. So yeah, we do pretty well with originals, which leads us to the next change, which is now Legendary Truth is no longer in Cario. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> it's just gonna be the ongoing joke now, Cario. Yeah, right. But uh, it's just the Legendary Truth or Legendary Truth, um, which. I, I don't see that as changing the possibility of there still being some some carry Ohio um, kind of it's Easter eggs in there somewhere. Yeah. Um, but now it's no longer the initial focus as the legendary truth and carry Ohio coming together, mm-hmm. uh, which I, I thought was a really good idea. Actually, once we talked about this on the last podcast, I was like, damn, this this makes so much sense, given that it's the 30th year anniversary but we'll finally give it a story and we're gonna finally get a, a background of what this place was and i was getting pumped for it and i've never even yeah. seen it till like that last episode we filmed and i was like never even heard of it and now i'm i'm not as excited <laughs> yeah and we get to visit Cary, ohio that is you know the the lore of halloween hornets which could have been a really good, good opportunity to bring back a lot of past scare zones or, or references to past things as well being that a lot of their universe takes place in Cary, ohio and it could have been a cool like throwback to like the last 30 years of hornets you know what i mean yeah now as we're talking about this it kind of gives me an idea of the next thing but before we go into the next thing um i just want to name a, the the houses that are staying the same as far as the speculation map um, so what we have still the same is Beetlejuice, um, Bedtime Stories, Terra Cruentis, which I found out that Terra Cruentis is actually the like scare zone where the Terra Queen um, ruled over. Okay. Um, Dungeon of, of Terra, um, which is the first uh, Halloween or the first house to come to Fright Nights, which was Fright Nights before it was Fright Nights before it was Halloween Horror Nights the second yeah. year. Um, and then the haunting of Hill House, which I, I think I've heard others say it as well. Uh, there, the general consensus, has, at least from what I've noticed, maybe I'm being biased, is that the haunting of Hill House is something everybody actually really, really wants. No, I've been hearing a lot of the same thing too from a lot of YouTubers. Like every, so I'm kind of glad that they didn't leave the speculation map because I've been since that came out. Like me and Sammy have been talking about that being a property at Universal. It'd be so perfect. Yeah, dude. It. it I, like like I said on the last podcast, it would be too easy to make this house amazing given the content that it gives us. Yeah. So the the fact that it's still on here, I'm extremely excited about that. Um, if they're listening to the feedback that the community is saying, um, and I'm right about the general consensus, then that should be something that is solidified for yeah. this year's event. I think the uh-huh. two hype mazes I have right now, if we can go off that for a little bit, is uh, Haunting a Hill House and Beetlejuice. Yeah. Yeah, I think there there's a lot behind Beetlejuice as well, just because um, they both make a lot of sense. The Haunting of Hill House, just because of the content that it gives us, and then Beetlejuice, because of his history with the event, um, the fact that he has been at Halloween Horror Nights, he has had a show at Universal Studios that was kind of horror-related. And he's funny, uh, dude. Like, yeah. Ghostbusters work, so I think Beetlejuice will work, definitely. Exactly, exactly. And I could see that train of thought, that train of thought working out. Beetlejuice, or Ghostbusters worked out last year, Beetlejuice would be perfect and takes it a step further into the horror genre. Exactly. Um, but that being said, those are the houses that remain on the speculation map now that we have version 2.0. Um, and something new that has been added is an unknown original. Going off of the fact that they changed the title of The Legendary Truth, I literally just thought about this right now. May- maybe Cary, Ohio is getting its own original. I hope so, man, because, I mean, Legendary Truth... With Cary, uh, Ohio would have been Cary, cool what Cary. I, <laughs> Cary, oh yeah. Um, Legendary Truth with Cary, Ohio would have been amazing because what you've told me about the whole uh, lore of, of Legendary Truth and, and what it is, the, the interactivity of that, which would have been really cool. Um, however, if Cary, Ohio is still going to get its own, if it's, if it's potentially going to get a property or its own original house at the, um, at the event, that furthers it not only focusing on legendary the legendary truth um you know genre of its own but carry ohio itself can get focus on its own and um we can get more of a even more backstory as to what this is like i said it would be really cool to walk through carry ohio and you just see a um a lot of references and throwbacks to the last 30 years of of horror nights out in orlando yeah um yeah i i think uh an original 
based on Cary, Ohio, can just have it could be a town with a bunch of instead of having Cary, Ohio, Cary, Ohio Easter eggs. Now we have Easter eggs of the prior years yeah. just hidden through there. You know, maybe we see a Sam sitting somewhere around there. Yeah. We see one of the pumpkins from Pumpkin Guts. We see a vampire from uh, I forget that one. There was that one. Uh, Vamp eighty five. Yeah, Vamp eighty five. Yeah. So things of that nature. Um, so it would be kind of a reverse Easter egg. Now the, the Easter egg has become the center focus with everything else becoming an Easter egg. Exactly. Um, I, I'm going to throw this... another, another speculation out there, if I may, too, for an go original ahead. IP or an original uh, house. Um, and I'm going to go and say, go on a limb here and say Jack the Clown because he's one of Halloween Horror Nights' most famous mascots. Yes. And noticeably missing from this, this whole entire speculation map is a lot of focus around some of the original um uh what's it called uh i was gonna say mascots but now i'm i'm icons. blanking out icons yeah, yeah the icon years um the only thing that's on here is bedtime stories and terra cruentis and i doubt that the storyteller and the terra queen are really the main icons that yeah. people love we all know jack is huge there's yeah, jack, no way every time he comes back dude people love it yeah, there's no way that that the storyteller and the Terra Queen get a spot in this event over Jack. That would be yeah. crazy. Um, so I've yeah, that's, that's, Jack's hosted the event probably more than all of them combined. <laughs> yeah, that, that's a good point. That's a good point. This could be an opportunity for them to add a, a Jack original house. But the fact that just the simple fact that some of the the main icons, I, I would say the main icons, uh, the storyteller is one of them, but I, I don't think she would be the top. I think the top three would probably be um, the director. Well, it would be Jack in this particular order. Jack, the caretaker, and the director. And yeah. then you would have the usher and then maybe the storyteller. But the the top three, I, I would they would have to come back for the 30th anniversary before the Terra Queen and the storyteller. So um, who knows? Maybe they host the event together. That'd be dope. That'd be crazy. Yeah, so the director... we get... Yeah, the director, the director filming the caretaker, the caretaker Jack, like, and Jack. People. Oh man, yeah. that would be crazy. Or or the the big named icons get their own uh, scare zones. But yeah. that I think that would be a waste of their names. Yeah. Um, or they can bring back. Um, I don't know if you remember a, a few years ago, a while back, Jack had Jack the Clown actually had his own torture show. Yeah. Where he would take a bunch of teens and like torture them, which I thought was cool. They could yep. bring if they even brought something that like that back. I would love it. Yep. Yeah. Some of the things that that, but that that was also a less. Uh, uh, it, it was a different time and day mm -hmm. of the event. There, everybody wasn't so PC. So yeah. it'd be nice to see something like that, but, but they probably yeah. won't because of the time yeah. change. So. Yep. Um, so who knows? We'll we'll see what that unknown original ends up being, and yeah. then the last new addition to our uh, speculation map over here in Orlando is a secret IP, um, which also opens up the door for a ton more speculation. Um, Let's just the, be real. It's going to be a Blumhouse property. <laughs> that That's that's what they're saying, uh, a Blumhouse property. But Blumhouse was noticeably absent last year. So... Yeah. Uh, uh, I, I don't know why everybody it, thinks Blumhouse, Blumhouse wasn't there yes last year. Yes and no, because I think Jason Blum may have helped produce us. Mm. I think. Let me I, let me double check on that. I, yeah, I don't know enough to say whether or not that's true or not. Uh, I'm just going to call you a liar. But <laughs> no, but um, yeah, l last year there was a lot of speculation around a Blumhouse property. It didn't show up in any speculation maps, but all the YouTubers were speculating it. And it was noticeably absent. And I think you and I on one of the East versus West last year actually talked about that. The fact that um, Blumhouse was noticeably absent at the event. Yeah. So for but them to come back, I don't really kind of absent from the yeah, whole. And I, and I know that that um, that Halloween Horror Nights has a good relationship with Blumhouse. Yep. Jason but... Blum Jason Blum produced us. Okay. Um, I know that, that uh, Halloween Horror Nights has a good relationship with Blumhouse and Jason Blum. But... At the same time, they have probably a better relationship with Netflix. More lucrative. 
Blumhouse is easier for them to get to, though, because they already own the damn company, Universal. So that's a lot easier for them to maintain rights to than stra- or um, Netflix. It, but it depends on the Netflix property, though, because some Netflix property are produced by Universal. So that way it'd be a little bit easier to get access to compared to uh, what Stranger Things was. But, but if you look at this lineup, one thing I would say is The Haunting of Hill House for me and you and a lot of like hardcore fans is going to be our anchor. Yeah. But for the general public there's noticeably missing an anchor house like a stranger things. So that's the key. I think would have to be bigger than just your average Blumhouse property. I would love it to be how ha- uh, Halloween 2018. That'd be dope. Um, Again, a Blumhouse property. Yeah, that that's a Blumhouse property. And uh, Michael Myers, I, I believe has been at the event for a while, like every two years. Well, so, Murdy also did say the reason why he was absent last year was because he wanted to take a break and not have to continue to bring him back every single year, which for a lot of diehard fans, a lot of people would just love to see Michael Myers in a new maze. Like, I know yeah, I definitely would. Even if the know, movies weren't nearly as good, I mean, like the later ones, like from like four through six, you know, like I would still love to see it in maze form because there's still a lot of cool kills that they can yeah. recreate in those movies. And you know me, I have a terrible bias towards Michael Myers. Yeah. So he could be at every single event. But if we look at the history of Halloween Horror Nights, Michael Myers has a deep-rooted history with the event. So oh, yeah. the 30th year anniversary would make sense to bring him back as well. And the fact that he comes back every two years to the event makes sense as well. Well, I think um, if they're going to really... if I think Halloween Kills comes out this year, right? It does, given no further... Uh, pushbacks because a bunch of movies have been pushed back for the release dates given to. Yeah, the I think they film. already finished filming Halloween Kills though. They might be in post production already because I remember this around this time last year. And again, the circumstances are different right now. But around this time last year, uh, I remember Jason Blum was already watching like early cuts of the film because they were still cutting it down, and he had already watched it like five times within March. <laughs> yeah, I think you're right. the The movie has been filmed. Yeah. Um, but. I think now just the current state of things is what's going to dictate the release date of a certain certain things. Because I think like also there's some Disney movies like Pocahontas and things like that that are done. Yeah. But the Mulan has still been be released already. Yeah, that's where I'm at. That's where I'm at. Mulan. <laughs> I said Black Widow, which I'm very pissed off about, was supposed to be released uh, in, I think next month, and it's pushed back now till yeah. And they're November. they're all done. They're all yeah. They're done. all done. Yeah. But uh, they they may get released on Disney Plus. Fast and Furious is supposed to be released next, or it was supposed to be released this month, and now it's not being released till next year. Yeah. So th- that may be the same thing with with um, uh, Halloween. Halloween Kills. Yeah. So who who knows? But that that last secret IP. Um, could be a lot of things. There's a lot of things that would make sense. Um, but at the same time, looking at the grand scheme of things, I, I feel like we're missing a true anchor house for the general public. I would say uh, Halloween is our best bet, being that if, if Halloween Kills is on track and everything's good for it to come out this year, I would say let's go with Halloween just because it would not only make a, a good marketing strategy for Halloween Kills, which I know a lot of people are going to go to theaters to see because Michael Myers is just a huge household name. Yep. Um, it would it would not only do that, but it would bring fans more to the event, not only to hype themselves for the movie, but just to – a lot of fans are just generally have been in love for Michael Myers for like the last 40 years. Yeah, and it, it was the highest grossing horror movie in history, wasn't it? I think so, or I yeah, it made so. a ton of money. Like on a on the budget, it, it it had. I think it had like a really low budget too. I mean, compared to most movies these days. But um, yeah, that's went, the thing went about over Blumhouse. like two hundred million or something like that, which is ridiculous. Yeah, that's the that's the thing about Blumhouse. They they're really smart as far as business tactic goes, and it goes back to me reading this article that you know everybody looks at Marvel like, oh, this big company that's making a ton of money and stuff. But it's like, well, look at Blumhouse, dude. They make really low budget horror films for like. Uh, you know, really low budget and everything, and they make a shit ton of money back, whether it sucks or not. They're financially profitable. Yeah. So. Um, but yeah, I think I'm going to go with Halloween on this one. I think it's got the most highest chance of coming to the event to hype up the new movie. It's a good marketing platform for the new movie as well. It's like, you know, go see Halloween Kills and then go to Horror Nights to visit the maze. Like, that's a great marketing platform. 
or even if you're at Halloween Horror Nights, and depending where they in Hollywood at least, depending where they set it at, uh, if it's going to be in the back lot and stuff, it's a good opportunity to actually they do this thing in the back lot where they have projectors up on screens, and while you're waiting in line, you can watch like Crypt TV and a bunch of other stuff. It'd be a good marketing platform to uh, show the trailer for Halloween Kills if it's out by then. You know what I mean? Yeah, and uh, just to kind of go back, I just did a quick search, and it says that yeah, Halloween 2018 was the highest grossing horror movie. In history with 255.5 million dollars damn i just stubbed my toe on my fucking <laughs> desk <laughs> <laughs> that's why i made like a face real quick i was like oh all right uh so that is that wrap up for east coast yep that's all for the east coast all right let's jump into um the west coast now mazes that we still have come into the event uh all hollows evil is still speculated uh, Walking Dead full day attraction is confirmed. Haunting a Hill House still speculated. Jordan Peele's original still speculated. The Universal Monsters, The Bride, music by Slash still speculated. Beetlejuice still speculated, and Billie Eilish's own maze is still speculated. Yep. Um, um, one update you may not have seen on here yourself is uh, the Walking Dead is going to have more walkers, even more than the more that they've had before. More zombies than ever. More zombies than ever. Dude, you know how many times they've told me that every year and I've been excited? <laughs> Come on. <laughs> More dead than ever. Damn right. Fuck yeah. The line's gonna be dead as well. You know, you want you wanna know you wanna know how much walker you know you, you wanna know how much walkers they really add in that thing? Literally a photo op of two other walkers yeah. outside the damn maze. Damn right. That's terrible. Yep. Um, but anyway, so we got a secret IP and an original that's been changed for uh Chilling Adventures of Sabrina and Gremlins. So the original on the map is speculated to be um, in the back of the mummy queue, which is uh, usually where a lot of big name mazes go. So I'm I'm very very excited to see if that original is going to be in the back of the mummy queue. What it's going to be? Speculations for that. It's kind of hard to tell with originals over here in Hollywood because. We really don't have any properties that we've done in the past that they can bring back unless it's a scare zone. Um, and what I'm going to speculate right now for this original is since it was another huge hit at the event last year, uh, scare zone wise, I'm going to speculate spirits and demons of the East, which was um, a, a, a Japanese uh, like Asian culture related uh, scare zone. And it brought a lot of these like statues and, and like these insane creatures over uh, one of the most notable ones, if you've seen it, is a four-legged stilt walker with this like weird uh, open mouth face, which was terrifying. Um, so if they can do an original maze based around that, I would be genuinely happy about that because that was a very good scare zone. And I would love to see the history of how those things became cursed and how they got transported to the U.S. and how you know they became the people who they are so, or the creatures that they are. So... That is going to be my biggest speculation for the original maze. As far as secret IP goes, I'm going to go the same with how I speculated for Orlando. It's going to be, I, I think it's going to be a Blumhouse property of some sort. I'm I, I'm going to go heavily based on Halloween right now. Uh, like I said, with the whole marketing of Halloween Kills, if it's on track to come out this year still, it'd be a perfect way to really promote that movie big time. And um, I mean, Murdy said he wants to do all years of Halloween, so... That's just another year that he can put on his belt uh, if they do another Halloween maze based around the 2018 film. Um, another maze I'm going to speculate for that uh, secret IP is going to be The Invisible Man, being that that was also a very huge hit so far this year. Um, which kind of sucks because it had a very limited theater release um, due to the coronavirus. But um, nonetheless, it was still a huge success. People have been watching it, renting it. And the people that I've that people that have seen it have really enjoyed it, and um, I've been hearing nothing but good feedback on it. And it's got really good reviews on uh, movie review websites and stuff. So, yeah, those yeah, are my I, two speculations. I, I watched it from home, and yeah, that that movie was completely different that than what I thought it would be in a great way. Yeah, and that one scene when she's talking to her sister. Oh, no. Don't go too far in that one. In case no one has seen it, but the I'm spoilers. Spoil but I know it. which one that, you're talking about. That one scene was ridiculous. I remember ridiculous. TLEV did a live stream of that movie, and I remember, 
I had already seen it, and I think the only one in that group that's seen it was uh, was Mr. E. And I remember in the live chat, I put, oh, the dinner scene, you guys aren't even ready for this one. And then they're like, no, no spoilers. I'm like, I'm not going to spoil it, but you guys aren't ready. Yeah, <laughs> that when that, that happened, I remember in the theater, like, in the theater, I, re- I remember looking at Samuel like, did that just fucking happen? Yeah, that. Oh, my God. And the thought process behind it, why yeah. it was done that way, I was just like, yeah, that that that's sinister on the highest level. Yeah, no, he tortured her in that movie, dude, which yeah. I think it was a very good psychological horror film in that movie. <laughs> Hell way. yeah. Hell yeah. No, that movie ended up being a lot better than I thought. And it's funny because when, uh, when I first was watching it, we were having sound issues. So <laughs> we didn't notice up to like 20 minutes in – or not 20 minutes in, when when uh, when she gets to the car. I'm not going to say how she, why, she gets, why she gets to the in car. In the very beginning? Yeah. When yeah. she gets to the car – we started noticing that like the lips were moving, but the sound wasn't coming out it was properly. Delayed, huh? <laughs> but we got that far. <laughs> yeah, that's good. Um, but, yeah. Oh, uh, I, yeah. Also, here you guys are getting a, a potential IP, Jabberwocky's house. No. <laughs> no. <laughs> that's horrible. They, Take that be, bullshit away. Dancing, and you're just gonna, they're gonna be like, you just got served, and then they disappear, and you're. Well, I heard, get, I heard, I heard, a, I actually did hear a speculation that I might be heading to Orlando. So, oh, screw you. <laughs> <laughs> gonna be he like, was actually invested into it for a second. No, uh, it's gonna be like you know that one episode of uh of uh South Park where they had you got served, and he was like, like Stan's dad gets hop- hospitalized, and it's he's like, oh yeah, your father got served here. Here, here. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that that's gonna be the the Jabberwocky's house. Yeah, it's gonna serve you. Yep. <laughs> now, I think the ongoing joke me and Sammy have too is like a Jabberwocky's ends contract with uh, 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 Halloween Horror Nights. But since the Not Scary Farm doesn't have the hanging no more, they signed a new contract to go to Knott's and be like, no, <laughs> that's my backyard event. Go somewhere yeah. else. No, hopefully not. It's crazy that they're still there. But yeah, I mean the. The the IPs that you're speculating for, I, I think that that spot is going to very easily be at both events. Um, yeah. So whatever it ends up being, you and I are probably going to get the same thing. Um, I, I think last year we had like an even share of the same like houses and same amount of originals, if yeah. I remember correctly. We did. Um, yeah, just about. I think you guys had, I think, one or two more, maybe one. One more, amazing. I think you guys had ten, right? Yeah, we had ten. Yeah, so we only I think we had nine. So we had one less, and that's just due to the space of our area. But you guys had uh, two more walkers. Yeah, two more walkers, man. <laughs> just in the photo op section. So, and I actually took a photo there, so I have there that you photo. Yeah, it's still a cool photo op to do. I mean, it's Walking Dead. You know, I mean, if you're a fan of the early era of Walking Dead, I mean, it's still cool. I know, but you guys have had that consistently at your event for so long now. It's already there. They might as well just like, oh, yeah, open the doors. It's good. <laughs> yeah, right. I, I guess. Mean, you, got pe- you have people who only go probably once a year, and that's just for Horror Nights, and that's like an opportunity for them to walk through it. Yeah, no, no, no I, I get that much. It's just um, when, it, when it comes to a repeat house at an event, it just that, – that style doesn't scream Halloween Horror Nights, and it's kind of something that's overlooked – constantly with that one property but when i go to like bush gardens that's that's how bush gardens runs their event it's yeah. the same properties every single year that's how knots is i mean what they do though is like uh, only and we'll get into this next week but i mean what they do is they really will they'll, they'll make minor tweaks to scene changes or something for the maze and every like couple years they bring in new mazes so this year we're gonna get two new mazes um, last year we got two new mazes, and especially with Knots, they're going off a storyline, which is going to really tie everything in for the 50th anniversary, which is coming up uh, in a couple years. So I think that's their goal is to change everything in the event to kind of tie into that lore of what's going on at Not Scary Farm as of last year. Yeah, we're a little bit off track, but yeah, that's off to to Knots 50 years. That's crazy. I know, coming the, the originals, man. They're the they're the OGs. If you want to talk about OGs of Haunt, they are the ones that started that shit. Yep. Yep. So, uh, anything else that changed for the West Coast? That's just about it, man. I mean, just the one uh, IP and the one original. So, yeah, that's going to probably do it right now for East versus West until we get any more news on a new speculation map. Stuff's always changing with Universal, especially when we get uh, later into the season. Um, you know, uh, 
they either can't get rights to stuff, so they have to pull out their plan B. And they have to change and tweak some stuff around, either for the better or just because they couldn't get their hands on something. But nonetheless, we'll see how the event goes. We won't know anything's official until the Universal team on both ends announce their uh, announcements, which at this point, I don't even know when that's going to happen. We should have gotten one or two already. So, yep. Um, and that hasn't happened yet. Um, but when that does happen, tune into East versus West. We'll talk about it, especially if it's covering both parks. This is the only show <laughs> that does that. Yeah, only. only. Only show that covers both East and West. The, the best. We're talking about, you know who we're talking about. <laughs> <laughs> you know who you are. You know. But um, to kind of conclude everything, um, you know, given what going off of what I said in the beginning, if this is your first time tuning in, um, make sure to subscribe, subscribe to to the Knights of Horror, subscribe to Edutainment. The Knights of Horror does uh, a, a lot of great things with my my co-host here, Anthony, being the the lead behind it, and then Edutainment. Um, I, I do a, a, an assortment of different things. I, I don't do, just do horror, but that that's probably the main focus. Make sure to subscribe to both of us as well as follow the podcast. Um, you know, Halloween Horror Nights, although it is our focus, isn't the only thing that we do. So make sure to go back and see the history. This is what the 17th episode you said? 17th or 16th, I believe. Somewhere around there. So we've put out a good amount of episodes, and they're not just all Halloween Horror Nights, even though that is the main focus. Um, we've done some Bush Gardens and uh, Not Scary Farm. Um, and we'll probably start adding some additional stuff. So comment oh, down. I, below. This is episode eighteen. We're almost at twenty. 18. There we go. So comment down in in the in the comments below if there's any suggestions that you would like to make. Um, we definitely take that into consideration for our next videos. We have a couple things already in line, and we're probably going to break a record with three weeks back to back. Yeah, I think for episode twenty, we need to get on some guests for kind of a milestone. Yeah, maybe maybe we bring. Bring one of those. Uh, we bring all the other copycatters on. <laughs> bring we'll bring like a uh, Losh or somebody, or you know who I would really like to have on here, uh, Zombie Chris, since he was recently on on SoCal Exploring, and we've tried to get him on here a few times. Yeah. So Zombie Chris, if you're listening, man, we've tried to get you on here before. We know now that you have the capability of getting on here, so we'd love to have you on. Yeah. We just gotta we gotta work out a time that works best for you, man. I know you're uh, still essential working, and we appreciate that. Um, yep. So, all you essential frontliners, whether you'd be in the medical field, the the uh, law enforcement field, uh, firefighters, grocery uh, stores, man, grocery stores, fast food restaurants, all you essential workers that are still out there working, uh, I want to give an extended thank you to you guys because um, without you guys, life wouldn't be going on the way it is right now. Um, and we really appreciate you guys, uh, stepping out in the front lines and, and keeping communities going and, and keeping us, you know, what we, we need to pick up what we need or hospital visits, or if we need to make uh, 911 calls of any sort, we, uh, we really appreciate all you guys doing that. Uh, I know times are tough right now, but just hang in there guys. Hopefully we'll get back to normal soon. Um, we just got to do our part in quarantining. If that's a word, quarantining. <laughs> We just got to do our part in quarantine, and uh, remember, stay quarantined to save Halloween, man. Yep. Because we want to hashtag save haunt season. Save haunt season, man. So, all right. Uh, one last thing to wrap this up. Of course, we have new East versus West merch on the website. Links in the bio. Check it out. T-shirts, hoodies, tank tops, women's T-shirts, long sleeves T-shirts, and even stickers. Um, if you want to go by and support East versus West, please do so. Um, we really would truly appreciate that. I think I'm going to get my shirt pretty soon. So yeah, then that means I'm going to have to get my shirt. We can wear it on the exactly. podcast. And promote Damn it right. even more. Damn right. All right, ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for watching another episode of East versus West. Tune in next week for another episode and we will see you guys soon. Deuces.